We are not amused. I am a prince of the realm, as you can see by my fine, fine livery. I command you, the rest of my player group, you will do my bidding, because I am royalty, and I have blue blood, whereas you have red blood, which is designed to be spilled on the floor in my august name. Go, go and die for your, for your prince, yes. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and we're talking royalty. The big wigs that wear their fancy gold vestments. Haven't worn this in quite some time, I can tell you. And it's causing havoc with the green screen, as you can see. But, um, so we're talking, yeah, we're talking nobility. And in particular, we're not talking about how to create nobility within your, within your environment. That's not something that we're talking about. What we're talking about is if you have a player who wants to be royalty, how do you handle that? And should they be allowed to be royalty? That's another question that you can ask. And I think the answer is uh, kinder if you trust the player and if you trust yourself as well. So how do you exactly go about having the princess of power, the duke of dastardly deception and damsel desecration? No, I couldn't go there. I needed, I needed a D with something to do with heroes. Uh, defense, dastardly damsel defense. There we go. The Duke of Dastardly Damsel Defense. Maybe your uh, maybe that's a character wants to to, to be a maybe the character wants to be a royal, and you want to allow them to do so. These are my thoughts on how you should do that, and things that you should make sure take place within the game so that it doesn't just fall apart. So, firstly, when we go here and we uh, start thinking about these kinds of things, we need to look at the setting. Are there a large number of nobles around? Does every star system have a duke or a count or a king or a governor? Does every kingdom have a whole bunch of counties which are broken down into dukedoms? Or is it the dukedoms that are broken down into counties? And then the counties are broken down into baronies? And is there that kind of structure in place? How, how many of these royals are running around? Um, is there a line to the throne? If it's just one or two, then the royalty becomes a lot more valuable. And that then starts to big questions of like, would the PC actually be allowed out of the kingdom, the spaceport, etc. This is frequently used in Hollywood as a film sort of trope, as a matter of fact. The princess who defies the orders of her father, or the prince who defies the orders of his mother, and they go rushing out into the common world because they believe it to be better than living in a life of absolute luxury. So this does happen, and you will need to think about that. What is the uniqueness? The uniqueness. What is the uniqueness? That's the Greek word, uniqueos, which uh, is a derivative of uniqueness, obviously. They stole it from us. Uh, the uniqueness of the line as well. So, is there only one king? Are there many kings? Is the princess or prince likely to be missed if they go astray? All those kinds of factors, again, come into play. And then, what is the power base like in terms of. If a princess were to stride into a village and declare, I am the princess, does everyone recognize the person and immediately fall to the ground in a desperate attempt to show that they respect her authority? How powerful is the position that this person is going into? Because you have to bear in mind that these are going to have direct consequences on your entire campaign. If King Arthur rode around and said, you know, do this, do that, they would certainly do it. It makes the campaign a very different kind of campaign as well. So think, think, about, think about these things and then it's try to figure out how that would apply in your world if so-and-so did this, if so-and-so did that. Because we're going to need to figure out how to limit the power that that particular individual has if they have lots of it. 
We then need to look at the expectation, not in terms of what do our players expect, but in terms of what does our world expect? What are the roles, the responsibilities, there's so many eyes in that word. What are the responsibilities and the roles of the individual? Is it that they have to attend musical concerts that their father likes to attend? because he likes to listen to his daughters sing all the time and they swim away and if they miss them they get kind of grounded or, or, or sort of their toys get destroyed by an irate father. What is the reason? What do they need to do to maintain their status? If they want to be a prince, excuse me, <coughs> if they want to be a prince, what do they need to do in order to exercise those princely duties? We look at the royals that run around the UK. They've got all sorts of things that they have to do. They have to go to hospitals and cut ribbons and sort of run around and do their military service and, and the like. That's absolutely fantastic. Is that something that the, our characters are going to have to do? Now, don't think that just by removing them and going, oh, well, you're the third in line. You have no duties. They would still have duties. Now, those can become some rather interesting adventure hooks. You receive a letter from your father. My dearest daughter, whilst you are wandering around connecting with the commoners, which is absolutely fantastic, wouldn't you be so kind as to pop into Skaghaven? There's a new orphanage that's being built, and someone has to go and open it. You're in the area. Good luck. Thank you. Be there by Tuesday. It's an adventure, isn't it? They arrive, they get to the orphanage, the orphanage is being opened up by some kind of vampire who's going to use the children to develop their power. It's a wonderful, wonderful way of, of, of developing out of those roles and responsibilities rather than making them roles and restrictions. You don't want to restrict them too much because otherwise the player doesn't want to carry on playing their royal uh, character. What is their access like? We've already spoken a little bit about their access. Can they walk into any structure anywhere in the world? Do they have enemies? jumping ahead, but in terms of accessibility, can they walk into a library and say, give me all the books. I am the prince of this realm. They are mine. Well, again, it kind of ties back with the responsibilities of protecting the people and the things that the people have. So that's something for you to think about. What kind of access do they have? What is the fame like? Do they get just crammed by the masses? Today, if, uh, say, Prince Harry decided to go and shop down in, in um, Piccadilly Circus, he would get swamped by thousands and thousands of fans desperate to take a selfie with him, uh, do more with him. Uh, who knows what sort of malicious, malicious, malicious people are out there. But they would not be able to move and they certainly wouldn't be able to go adventuring. They would have this this convoy of groupies desperately trying to follow them. So how dangerous is the fame for the character and how do they have to handle that? Do they have to wear a disguise like in most Disney movies, put a hood over their head <laughs> and that's it no one will recognize them is that something that they need to do and the enemies of course who are the enemies again these are all just plot adventure points for me i look at these and i go yes they have enemies obviously they have enemies they have siblings who want to be third in line rather than fourth in line they have aunts and uncles who feel that they should be in charge and so they need to sort of eradicate the family tree they have other family friends who just don't like them they have evil wizards who want to ransom them and all those kinds of things so there is a wealth of adventures that suddenly comes out of a player being well having their character being royalty so there are some options there now we need to look at the consequences what happens if the royalty character doesn't do their responsibilities they have to be consequences there if they if they violate the law what happens if prince harry got drunk and went and beat up a bunch of people what happens if prince philip did it it would be a very, very sad day indeed if he could actually beat up anybody. But if he did, it would be scandalous. There would be all sorts of things going on. Court cases, repatriate, you know, there'd be, there'd be like, we'll give you an estate. Just, just take an estate. Have an estate. It's, it's yours. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. Go and have an estate. Um, however, the, the, can you imagine the consequences that would happen? In a more medieval time period, the consequ consequences would be far more than just a social media storm and some newspaper headlines. Uh, there would be execution, perhaps there would be excommunication, denunciation, you are exiled from my kingdom. What happens when they violate the laws? What happens when they don't follow the demands that, they, that their, their superior makes upon them? And they need to be fairly grave, in my opinion. You need to make sure that the player recognizes that just because they have this additional power, they have those additional responsibilities and consequences for not acting upon them. 
Can they be given orders? Can they give orders? Again, if they give orders, what are the consequences? They get back to the palace and they get shouted at for ordering a battalion of men to defend the city. That battalion of men was supposed to defend a convoy of orphans which never showed up and the orphans were all slaughtered. There needs to be consequences. There needs to be things that happen as a result of the players abusing their status. If they don't abuse their status, if they go along with it, there needs to be rewards as well. Aha! I'm so glad to see you back, daughter. What you did down in that little county was absolutely fantastic. Who would have thought there was a mine player down there? Well, anyway, I've decided to add it to your titles. You are now the Countess of the County of um, uh, Colin, Colin, Colinby. Whatever you want to do. But the idea is that you reward good royals and you punish bad ones. It's only been happening for the last several thousand years. And what about costs? Can a noble arrive at a tavern and say, Oh, I'll give you the official stamp of royalty stayed here in exchange for free lodgings, our armor to be repaired, all the magical items in the building, and I get to sleep with your wife. Is that viable? If it is, fantastic. Let the players abuse it at your own peril. However, there must be consequences. Otherwise, they will just run rampant with this and you will not have a good time. You need to have balance. What about the other and what about the other PCs? Are they royalty? Do they have to follow what this royal says? If let's say the Queen of the Netherlands says, I command you to let me win bridge. And all of her friends sitting around, do they let her win bridge? And if they don't, do they get their heads cut off? That's what happened in the past. Uh, nowadays she would probably just let them beat her at bridge. I would imagine she would be better than than that. So uh, all of those kinds of things, well, I don't, she isn't the queen now, it's the king, isn't it? I think there was a thing that happened. Anyway, I didn't really keep up with royalty in modern day because, well, they're not really as powerful as they used to be. They're financially powerful, but um, they can't just say, off with the head! Uh, they probably still do, wishing that that would be true, but it actually probably isn't. So nonetheless, what about the other NPCs? What do they get out of it? Do they have to follow the orders of this one noble PC? I really don't like that idea because it starts to invest too much power in a PC if they're not good at using it. Do they get invited to the palace for dinners if they don't have a title? In traditional sense, they wouldn't necessarily get invited or they'd have a separate table down with the servants, three floors below the ground in a separate entrance around the back. Yes, something like that. You've got to figure out how to balance out with the PCs. Whether that is giving them their own special place in society, maybe they are also princes and princelings and lords and lord lordettes, ladies of the realm. Uh, however you do it, you must take into account the other PCs. Give them something that's pretty cool and special as well as that main PC. The NPCs that they're going to encounter, perhaps you're going to balance them out, um, give them just as much power. The brother who's also a prince, the sister who's a princess, the queen, the king. Those NPCs need to be rounded out and need to f sort of balance out the whole thing, in my opinion. That's the way to do it. Limited missions. You need to be able to, to have missions that are, I would say, specific to royalty. So go off and open up a village, go and do this, go and do that, go and do the next thing. But I wouldn't have every single mission being revolving around the roles of nobility. And of course, that's your campaign setting. I would have one or two just to punctuate that they do have these duties and things. And then the rest of the time, I would sort of let them get on with it. And controlled power. That is really, really, really important. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at that word. Is it right? I don't know. Uh, maybe just less trolling power. That's what I meant. Yes, less trolling power uh, in behalf of the players, in behalf of their characters, and then of course on behalf of the NPCs that they interact with. If the NPCs all bow down and scrape down, that's setting a precedent which the PC will obviously capitalize upon. You need to give them some kind of barriers. Bring balance. Bring balance to the force, I say. Balance to the force. So when allowing a character to be royal or have royal blood, it certainly can create a wonderful integrated story that seems to benefit from this make sense type of thing. The prince is out to save his realm. The princess is there to ensure that evil will never be defeated. Great potential plots, wonderful stories, but they do come with quite a few questions that you need to answer before your game starts. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in hot water with a little tyrant running around, ruling the kingdom, stealing it away from their benevolent parents before you know what has happened. 
We don't want that, do we? Well, maybe we do, and they become the villain for your next campaign where the players have to go and thwart themselves. Hmm. Until next time, let me know what you do with royalty. Do you allow your players to play royalty? And if so, what are your limitations or controls that you give them? Write it down below. Let's share, let's talk, let's discuss. It is the whole point of this channel. Until next time, if you haven't uh, heard about it, www.worldanvil.com is an aggregator website. It aggregates your world building. So they do have sections on royalty and cast structures and those kinds of things. You can go and populate it all there and it helps organize it for you. I mention that because it is it is a fairly useful tool to use. It is free to use. If you want certain privileges, you can then pay for those privileges and so on. Have a look. It is worth checking out if you want to bring all of those pieces of paper notes together digitally and then share them with your players. So easy, so nice, so good. Go do it. Till then, happy gaming. I order you to hit that like button. And then I order you to subscribe. These are my orders. I have given them. You will enact them. Because I am royalty. And you, you are completely and utterly valuable to the channel. And I thank each and every one of you for hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, sharing our video content, joining our Patreon. Become one of these people down below. It makes this channel actually possible. And we want to thank each and every one of them, but I wouldn't have enough time if I started today.